friends welcome back to my channel only bio i'm continuing with the discussion of the salivary glands we had started up with the human uh, digestive system on demand of one of the viewers and i have already uploaded the video of the oral cavity as well as the human tongue so in continuity with this today i'm going to present up the human salivary glands so let us understand this we are talking about the human salivary glands please remember that the human salivary glands are exocrinal in nature i repeat the human salivary glands are exocrine in nature now what is meant by this exocrine exocrine means they pour their secretions via a duct they have a duct a separate small pipe which can pour or yeah, take their secretions from one part to another such glands are discussed or uh, yeah, termed as exocrine glands now coming to the salivary glands they secrete saliva now you would be surprised to know that the total secretion of saliva throughout the day is almost 1 to 1.5 liters and its ph is almost 6.8 and also let us understand what does the saliva consists of the saliva consists of main mucus which is which makes the saliva slimy or else it would have been just as water but saliva is different from water it is slightly slimy because of the presence of mucus in it second it also consists of an enzyme which was earlier called as ptyalin and now called as the salivary amylase enzyme and in addition to it it also consists of the enzyme that is lysozyme so these are the components of saliva now let us talk about the human salivary glands there are three types of human salivary glands the first one is parotid the second one is sublingual and the third one is sub maxillary also called as sub mandibular so let us talk about these salivary glands in details now out of these three salivary glands first of all, first of all that we need to know is the parotid glands are the largest of all the salivary glands the sublingual are the smallest of all the salivary glands and the submaxillary are the medium sized salivary glands now let us understand where the parotid are actually located parotid which are the largest of all the salivary glands they are present slightly below and in front of the ear and where do they open up so they open up exactly in front of the upper second molar teeth by means of duct which is called as the stenson's duct i repeat it is stenson's duct so the parotid glands open into the oral cavity by means of the stenson's duct now this parotid gland can be said to be a serous kind of a gland that is its secretion is said to be serous in nature because it consists of enzymes and remember whatever is the secretion produced by the parotid gland it contributes almost 20% to the saliva so the secretion of parotid gland which forms a part of saliva that contributes only 20% to the saliva now friends it's also interesting to know that even though it's 20% of the saliva it has an important contribution that is it has the enzyme ptyalin in it as well as lysozyme 
Lysozyme is the enzyme that is uh, what you can say is an important part of the immune system because you might have heard it. This is the enzyme which has an important role in killing the bacterial cell walls. So this stands as a immune response. So from this you can understand that uh, whenever we are consuming food, even if that food has some bacteria, so a few of the bacteria might be killed by the lysozyme that is present or that is poured into the saliva by the parotid gland. Now coming to the next one that is sublingual. Sub, the word sub means below. Lingua is the other word for tongue. So this is the gland that opens below the tongue and hence the name sublingual. And as I've already said, these are the smallest glands. They open below the tongue by means of the duct of Rivenus. I repeat, by means of the duct of Rivenus. Very, very important in terms of need. Duct of Rivenus. And it contributes just 5% to the saliva and this sublingual secretion it mainly consists of mucus which makes it slimy. Now coming to the last one that is submaxillary or submandibular salivary glands that are present at an angle of the lower jaw but they open up below the tongue itself. Earlier they were called as submaxillary and now they are mostly called as submandibular. Once again, sub is below, maxilla is the upper jaw and mandible is the lower jaw. Now these are the glands which open up by means of Wharton's duct. So the names of the ducts are often asked. So it's a Wharton's duct by means of which it opens up into the oral cavity below the tongue. And this contributes almost 70% to the saliva. It is described as seromucus in nature. This gland is called a seromucus because is is ke secretion mein uh, amylase enzyme bhi hai or mucus bhi hai. So that's the reason it is described as seromucus in nature. Now coming to the functions done by the saliva. As I said, saliva is almost its secretion is one to one point five liters per day and its pH is 6.8 and its components are mucus, tylen and lysozyme. Let's talk about each one. Mucus, it helps in moistening the food and also makes the swallowing process very easy because it is slightly slimy to touch so it's easy for deglutition that is swallowing. Then it consists of tylen that is salivary amylase. Now amylases are those enzymes which work on carbohydrates, mainly starch. Aapko jaise ki pehle maalum hai ki apne jo khane mein sabse zyada dominance hota hai, to wo hota hai starch ka. Rather starch forms a very very important part of our diet. So if at all I do talk about the action of the salivary amylase, so starch is acted upon by the enzyme tylen also called as the salivary amylase generally at a pH of almost 7 and it breaks it down to form maltose plus isomaltose and at times we also say it also results in the formation of limit dextrins. So these are the simpler forms of carbohydrates that are produced due to the action of tylen on starch which forms the main component of our diet. Now also remember that the secretion of saliva is stimulated by chloride ions. I repeat, secretion of saliva is stimulated by chloride ions. Also remember that the parasympathetic nervous system I repeat, the parasympathetic nervous system stimulates the production of saliva. I repeat, parasympathetic nervous system, it stimulates the salivary glands so as to produce more of saliva. Whereas the sympathetic nervous system 
it acts opposite to it that is it decreases the production of saliva via the salivary glands another thing there is an importance of chloride ions many a times this is asked in mcqs ki which are the ions that become essential for increasing or for stimulating the salivary production okay now coming back to this the salivary amylase is going to function here however that doesn't mean that the entire starch is really digested in the oral cavity we say it helps in partial digestion of starch the reason behind it is it's only 35 to 40% of the total starch present in the food that undergoes digestion in the oral cavity however cooking of the food and chewing the food maximum number of times helps the digestion to be a bit easier the reason behind it is as you keep on chewing the food the surface area on which this enzyme can act it goes on increasing and hence it is normally said that more the number of times we chew the food the more better is the digestion so this is all about the salivary glands hope you liked it and please ensure that you hit the like button the subscribe button the bell icon and please share it with maximum of your friends so that even they can be helped by these videos to enter into whichever field medical field paramedical field which they wish to all the best thank you